Now, if you're just now joining us, where have you been? <laughs> but we're glad that you're joining us now. We are at T minus just under six minutes until liftoff of the ninth Starship test flight. The booster, the super heavy booster flying today will be flying for its second time. Last flight was on flight seven and just turned around in two flights, which is pretty incredible. I'm super excited to see that booster fly again. See if we pass around that T minus 10 second mark. Seconds. It's one hell of a sight from here. We see an arcing right over top of us. We see 33 out of 33 Raptor engines lit on Super Heavy as it starts to ascend skyward. Coming up on maximum aerodynamic pressure, then only about a minute and a half until we get into hot staging. Wow, Dan, that was incredible. <laughs> we could feel the building shaking here, feel the, the vehicle's power. Now we're just about a minute away from shutting down those engines on the booster. Again, this booster is flying for its second time today. All right, so hot staging coming up a little under a minute. We're gonna see all but the three center engines turn off on the booster. So our version of Miko, most engines cut off. And then just a few seconds later, hoping to see six engines ignite on ship to push it away. All right, hot staging, about 30 seconds. And definitely keep an eye on which way the booster flips. First ever directional flip we're going for today should flip straight up. See those engines powering down? Booster engine cut off. Ship ignition. Stage separation. Incredible flip by Super Heavy Booster, and you can see those six engines, those three engines on the ship ignited. Six healthy Raptors <laughs> running on ship on its way to space. Peak that engine view. Booster doing the boost back. Chris, how's it looking over there at Hawthorne, man? It is looking Raptor chamber pressure is nominal. It is looking absolutely incredible here in Hawthorne. As we said, six healthy engines on ship. We've got 13 out of 13 engines on the booster. Now down to those three, which is what we expect in the final moments of the boost back burn. Now, as a reminder, we are not recovering the super heavy booster today. We are instead going to do booster some- Booster boost shut down. And there we had a good shutdown of the boost back burn. Next up will be the jettison of that hot stage ship ring. avionics power and telemetry nominal. Great call out there that everything looking nominal aboard the super heavy vehicle, which is returning to Earth. And we're going to be doing some experiments with it, including a higher angle of attack re-entry, uh, as well as some engine tests as it gets closer to the Gulf. We are, again, because of these tests not recovering it, we are sending it to the Gulf on purpose to do those tests. But again, you see the booster on the left-hand side of your screen. You see ship with six healthy engines continuing its ascent to its planned suborbital trajectory. Uh, everything going very well so far for Starship's ninth flight. Now uh, four minutes, 15 seconds in. Great views from inside of the uh, aft engine area of ship there, looking at those uh, three sea level and three Raptor engines on the right-hand side of your screen. 
the booster doing its LOX dump, that liquid oxygen dump. So because we don't need some of that liquid oxygen propellant in its tanks, we vent that propellant out to lessen the booster's mass as it comes in for its landing. Just absolutely gorgeous views watching these two vehicles do their respective things in the skies over Texas here today. And Dan, we're approaching the five minute mark into the flight. Super Heavy is descending rapidly. Uh, what can we expect here in the next few minutes as it does no, its I'm atmospheric directly. tests? Yeah, now as we had talked about, Super Heavy might not have a very smooth ride down. We're gonna be putting <laughs> it through this higher angle of attack. So we're kind of pitching it up a tiny bit, increasing drag. We've done this in wind tunnels. We've done this in computer modeling. It shows that sometimes the control isn't great, uh, but only one way to really prove it out, and that's to get real world data. So here comes Super Heavy. It should be igniting for its landing burn in just about 40 seconds from now. And we are going to relight 13 engines, then bring that down to three engines. As, as, as we talked about earlier, we will be intentionally Booster shutting down. Safe. We will be shutting down one of those three center engines intentionally to push the limits of the super heavy booster. Super Raptor chamber pressure is nominal. And continuing to see six healthy engines on the ship three sea level and three vacuum engines still ignited as the super heavy booster is making its way back down to earth. We can see those grid fins doing some heavy work. Booster landing start up. Ignited for our landing burn. It may have ended with that landing burn. Does look like we lost telemetry from the booster once we started into that landing burn. Did you see a confirmation that the booster did demise? So the booster's flight ending before it was able to get through landing burn, but again, we are not bringing that back. We we're expecting it to make a hard splash down in the Gulf. We were getting live data back the entire time through that high angle of attack flight. So that was something that was really vital for us to get during this reuse. First reflight of booster in the books. All right, ship has about two minutes left. In the final stages of this ascent burn. We did see shutdown of the Raptor engines. We do stagger these, so we do the Raptors first. Those three have shut down successfully. Sea level's still running. Ship engine cut off. Ship and cut off insertion. the three most beautiful words in the English language. And great call out that we had nominal insertion. <sighs> An incredible flight test so far today. We reflew a super heavy booster for the very first time in nine test flights. Ship is in its orbital trajectory. Again, it's going to remain suborbital for its mission today. But it ignited, all, is saved. It ignited all six of its engines and made it all the way through SECO just now. It's, it's going to be pretty cool. We've got them stacked inside of the Starship payload bay. Um, and we'll have potentially a couple of views. You saw one camera pop up. Yep, there we go. Look look inside of the <laughs> payload bay of Starship. You can see them stacked down in the middle of your view. We are expecting the payload door to open in a little over a minute from now. And then once that payload door is open, about a couple minutes later is when we will start start dispensing those Starlink yeah, similar. That's a, what a view great right view. at the bottom of the stack. <laughs> so should be should be able to see them kind of firing out from right there. So really cool. Well, we heard the door open was in progress. 
it was unable to actuate all the way open, so they are going to close it back up. Hal told me no. He said, <laughs> I'm sorry, Dan. Can't do that. Looks like we won't get the door open today. We've essentially lost our attitude control with Starship. We are still on a path toward re-entry. We are suborbital, so no matter what, we are going to enter. However, this lowers the chances for it to be a controlled re-entry. So if you think back to Flight 3, when we had something similar happen, um, just the end symptom of a loss of attitude control, we were in a roll by the time we hit re-entry. So we are going to re-enter. We should hopefully still have views. Uh, we are at the phase where we would expect entry to start uh, within the next minute or so. So we are entering uncontrolled, but again, we're entering into an airspace and a sea space that is cleared and monitored in advance of launch and before we get to this phase. Uh, during re-entry, we do expect the vehicle to see about 1400 degrees Celsius. And there you can see the, the flap uh, Feeling that temperature there, a uh, little bit melting away. Well, it's re-entering actively <laughs> yep. right now. Um, and again, we did do what's called passivation. So you essentially vent all of your excess propellant overboard before you hit the atmosphere. Um, that's a safety measure we can take on the ship while you still have contact with it. Um, so that was done. It's now coming down in the predetermined hazard area that was cleared ahead of flight. Still a lot of work to do, but really big moment, Chris. How's everybody doing over there in Hawthorne? What's the vibes, man? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it, it's a test program, I mean, and that's what we're here to do. We're here to learn, and that was definitely the vibe and the atmosphere here at Hawthorne. Uh, would have been great to see ship get all the way through its objectives today, but with all of that data that came down through the Starlink system, uh, we're, we're definitely going to learn, and we're definitely going to fix that and push forward. Uh, also, great to see the responsible engineers here in Mission Control uh, talking with the flight control teams in Starbase. We talked about how it's great having that expert, uh, that expert knowledge on console to be able to go to at a moment's notice and that really helped us make the right decisions in orbit today when we decided to passivate the vehicle so we will be here looking forward to flight 10 and uh, some success on future flights all right now this is not the end we're gonna have a whole bunch of cool liftoff stuff so be sure to follow us on x at spacex for more and we will see you back here for flight 10